Content creation, high performance storage solutions. What's our lowest common denominator for our highest performing bandwidth? This is our 20 gigabit USB-C overview and implementation guide. We've got five talking points we're going to cover. Number one, the specs. A lot of information there we need to go through and sort to understand the what, why, and how because you're going to see a lot of different terminologies used. Number two, we're going to look at the layout as it relates to motherboards and also some laptops. It's an Easter egg hunt. Number three, we're going to look at the chipsets that are going to make this work. Native chipset support as well as separate chipsets. Number four, we're going to look at devices. And that's what made this video relevant now because uh, number five is the I.O. add-in cards. And that was kind of what got our attention trying to figure out how to do this. But when we finally saw some of the devices coming out that we've seen as early as 2020, most of it was in 2021. But what's coming out right now puts this all together because as we talk about 20 gigabit USB-C, we have to look at the technology involved because there's actually three technologies we're talking about. Number one, we're talking about the protocol, but because of the protocol, we're also talking about the secondary part, which is the bandwidth of the protocol. And then the other part, which I call number three, but it's actually number two, is the connector. So what got my attention was when I saw 20 gigabit and I started trying to figure out how this works. And we're going to look at what the official terminology is, but as it relates to the overall spec, but you're going to see the wording in probably three or four different ways. So I want to show you what you're looking for. So when you see it, you'll understand. But what brings this all together? Uh, because the question we always get asked, do I build or do I buy? And do I do it now or do I wait? So where do we stand with the technology? 20 gigabit is going to get us with the least amount of hassle across almost any computer to be implemented on a motherboard. Number one requirement. Let's look at the specs. Then we'll go through all that. And this is the USB Data Performance Language User Guide from the USB IF, which is uh, kind of interesting. As we go through this, they're going to talk about the USB Data Performance Overview. And that overview also gets into USB 4, so we have to consider that what's involved. Now, from a marketing standpoint, the terminology that is supposed to be used is USB 5 gigabit, USB 10 gigabit, USB 20 gigabit, and USB 40 gigabit. And as we talk about these specs, we'll look at that again and reference that. The terminology they've used, first of all, they've defined the protocol. Second of all, they've defined the speed of the protocol. But it says nothing about the interface, which kind of has me concerned, and that's a conundrum. Because, uh, as I said, the title of this video is 20 gigabit USB-C. But we have to see how this places in the hierarchical structure of what's going on for the past, present, and the future. Okay, 20 gigabit USB-C, again to reiterate, is going to be pretty easy to implement. How do we do that? The specification for everything we're looking at in this chart right now is predicated on PCI Express 3.0, four lanes. And because that's PCI Express 3.0, four lanes, that's important to remember and keep that in mind because when we go to USB 4, there's a version 1 and a version 2. And that's supposed to uh, also envelop Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 on USB-C. Okay, when we get to 40 gigabit on USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, the 40 gigabit is bi-directional bandwidth, but remember, that's on four PCI Express lanes, and it's PCI Express 3.0. So, and the 40 gigabit is supposed to be bi-directional. Now, as one viewer pointed out, something can be specified and meet the qualifications for Thunderbolt 3 and only achieve 20 gigabit. Okay, remember because it's based on PCI Express 3, PCI Express 3, like we have in this machine, which is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator, and I like to reference this machine because we have the Gigabyte Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 in here that uses four lanes, but it's PCI Express 3. And that's important because even though, as Intel says, if it says Thunderbolt, it's Intel. If it says USB 4, and it's going to be according, or USB 3, it's according to the specification. But it needs the USB-C in there because that interface, that connection, tells me a lot about the protocol. Okay, as we look at the specs and as we define this, when we go to USB 4 version 1, that's supposed to be able to get up to 40 gigabits. For those of you that are chomping in the bits about how does that work on PCI Express 3, when PCI Express 3 with four lanes is only capable of a hair bit over 30, 31 gigabits. 
It can, it doesn't, it won't. But that's the specification because when we're talking about bandwidth, usually we're talking about burst mode, not throughput. So I want to specify and clarify as we go through this. Okay, when we get to USB 4 version 2, that's supposed to go to 80 gigabits. And the 80 gigabits, which is pretty wicked, is going to be on four lanes PCI Express 4. Get that? PCI Express 3 four lanes versus PCI Express 4 four lanes. How are they going to get the bandwidth? Separate topic. It's all in the marketing and the hype. And, and to reiterate, 20 gigabit can be implemented right now on any motherboard that has, number one, a PCI Express 3 lane. Number two, it has to be four lanes electrically. So like on this motherboard, which is the high-end desktop, I have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots, and I have one 8-lane slot that I'm using four lanes, and I lose four lanes. So I'm good for dedicated resources, but this is a high-end desktop. And I know we're all really bummed and miffed about both Intel and AMD apparently abandoning us on the high-end desktop. And keep in mind, consumer desktop motherboards, high-end desktop, workstation, enterprise, and above that. Okay, we can get USB 20 gigabit, or as I prefer to call it, 20 gigabit USB-C on any one of these platforms. It's easier on a system that has dedicated resources. Now, what brought this into light was the previous video where we talked about the AMD X670 Extreme chipset that's going to have 20 gigabit support, where you're going to have one to three ports. So there's going to be some native chipset support, but remember that chipset was designed with AS Media. So there's going to be a north bridge and a south bridge, whatever they're going to call it, two chipsets, which is the lesser chipset, but the two together, you get the most features with the Extreme. How are they going to do that? Because AS Media worked with them on the design of that, the next iteration of an AS Media chipset that's not out yet will be for USB 4. That's going to have the PCI Express tunneling over USB 4. So there's that delineation, there's that differentiation where we go from PCI Express 3 on USB 4 version 1 to PCI Express 4 version 2. Now, all that that has in common, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, version 1 and 2. All three of those have one thing in common. That header that's required on the motherboard. So this motherboard that has a header for Thunderbolt 3, that's all I can do. If I want Thunderbolt 4, there's a different motherboard on the workstation by ASRock that on the WRX80 has Thunderbolt 4. Otherwise, everything for Thunderbolt that has motherboard support whether it's Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4, is on the consumer desktop motherboard. So if you want the latest technology, it's on the consumer desktop motherboard, but you've got shared resources versus dedicated. On the high-end desktop, we have some dedicated resources. On the workstation, we have more dedicated resources, a lot more. But to be able to implement 20 gigabit USB-C, looking at the spec, as we look at some of the different motherboards, and I found a list because... Someone's going to ask, what about a laptop? Well, that depends. The furthest back I had seen was really about, probably, to reiterate, a couple of years ago, which would have been 2020, since this is 2022, about devices. And I didn't see the point of this until we had devices that support it. Okay, based on the list that I found from Kingston, and they should know, they have two Dell laptops that say it will support it. And if you go look at the marketing information, there's nothing about it. But if you go look at the specs, it's there that it's got a 20 gigabit port that supports display port over alternate. Other three things that USB-C can do. Number one, data. Number two, power delivery. And number three, display port alternate mode, which allows you to have a separate display for more video, which is a pretty neat idea, but that's what Thunderbolt does. But to reiterate, remember, right now with 20 gigabit USB-C, you don't have to have that header on the motherboard. You have to have a PCI Express 3.0 slot or better, but it's got to have four lanes. So those are going to probably be chipset lanes, which is going to be fine, but you can implement it. So we're going to look at the chipsets on some of the motherboards. We're going to look at the chipsets for the separate cards. AS Media has three chipsets we need to be aware of. The one you're looking at now and the one you're going to be looking for in the future that's coming down the pike. And because we had one motherboard that we looked at in the last video from Gigabyte that talked about the add-in card for USB 4, that's why we know there's going to be that little header, multi-pin header. Don't know how many pins yet. Don't have the details. You know, this stuff is just now coming about. But to reiterate, what brought this together was the devices that we have seen, which was curious, but the devices that are coming out from SanDisk that wrap this together, and you'll see what I mean. Let's take a look. And one last glance. 
USB 40 gigabit, USB 20 gigabit, USB 10 gigabit, and USB 5 gigabit. Now on your laptop, you're probably going to have either USB 3 or USB C that can be 5 gigabit. On a desktop, it could be the same thing. More than likely, on a laptop, you might have USB 10 gigabit. On a laptop that has 20 gigabit, that would depend on how old the laptop is, and that's only going to be seen, I would expect, on the new ones, but we're going to have to research. And there's been no way to test it until we had some devices that were worthwhile. Now remember, all this technology we're talking about for this speed is based on PCI Express 3 NVMe. So those drives are capable of about, as we talk about, a PCI Express 3.0 M.2 NVMe PCI Express SSD. Not an SSD, but an NVMe SSD, to reiterate. Those are capable of 3,500 megabytes on the read and the write. So when you introduce an interface like this with that protocol, you've got some overhead to come down below that. If they're talking around 1,000 megabytes, then they're looking at 10 gigabit. If they're talking anything over 10 gigabit per second, then we're looking at 20 gigabit. So these numbers are all kind of in a state and play, but what we're looking for is what we can do to implement this. Now's the time to do it. And that keeps us on track. We'll have a link up to this document about the specifications. So anybody who wants to take a look at it, and that's a copy of the link about how it's supposed to be referenced. But those specs are what they expect, which, um, again, I don't think is descriptive enough. So we're going to take a look at the first motherboard, the Gigabyte Z690 RS Master. And what I'm going to do is go over to specification, and I'm going to do a search that will take us down to USB, just USB. And under specification for USB, right up here at the top, it doesn't say anything about 20 gigabits. So one terminology you're going to find, this says two USB-C ports with USB 3.2 generation 2x2. Two two. So that's one terminology you're going to see. One port on the back, one through the internal USB header. Two USB 3.2 generation 2 type A ports, red on the back. Those would be, let's take a look, let's go to gallery. And if it shows us the I.O. panel, and that's not a real clear picture, but they won't let us zoom in real tight. Okay, so to reiterate, you've got one USB-C port and number two USB-C port. A lot of time they'll be labeled as 10 gigabit or 20 gigabit. But the red ports they're talking about, those are USB 3 ports. But we're concerned about those two ports. We don't have tight specs yet that we can focus on, so we're having to take what they've given us. But that way you can see USB 3.8, USB-C 3.2, generation 2x2. Two two. It's going to take a bit of search. And I'm going to show you these motherboards. We're going to list how they have this information set up. A lot of times you'll see generation 2. Sometimes you'll see generation 2x2. Two two, so you have to look for the clarification and also the speed. Uh, it becomes really easy looking for this if you're looking for cables. I'm not going to show you cables because that is a can of worms. There's a lot of different cables. And as this goes into USB 4, what you're going to see are active and passive cables. Active cables are going to be required for USB 4 version 2 to get that bandwidth, so they say. It'll be interesting to see how they're going to do that. Let's go back to the specs. But that's just one motherboard. But these are motherboards you guys have asked about. And this is an MSI Meg X570S Ace Max. Take a look at the specifications. And we're only focusing on one feature. As we always say, change one thing changes everything. We are looking for USB. And let's see what we've got. And on this particular system, we've got uh, generation 2x2. Two two, and that's on the rear. So let's see if we can take a look at the I.O. panel from the gallery. And I only see one on the rear. And that looks like, that looks like 20 gigabit. I can't make that out real clear right there. Let's go to the next one. Now this is an ASRock X670E Tai Chi, and we're looking for one specific item right here in the specs. I'll zoom in on that. One USB 3.2 generation 2x2 two two Type-C to the front, and to the rear, USB 3.2 generation 2. And what you're looking for is a 2x2 two two port, and until we can test these, we won't know what we've got. So for someone that's going to be wearing a headset, or if you're going to use a data drive, you're definitely going to want to have a case that will put that USB-C port on the front so you have access to it. Otherwise, you're reaching around back to get to it. I want to point that out. Let's take a look at another motherboard. And these are in no particular order. This particular motherboard is the uh, MSI MPG X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. Specifications. 
With MSI, it's a little bit easier to read than going through all their images. And they've got their stuff listed as, right there's one. One USB 3.2 generation 2x2 Type-C port to the rear. I'll give you some idea what you're looking for. 2x2, generation 2x2. And if that's to the rear, let's see if we can again take a look at the gallery and see if we can look at the I.O. panel. Okay, that looks like the port on the left is 10 gigabit USB-C and the port on the right, according to the number right there, looks like 20 gigabit USB-C, which is nice and handy. Another motherboard. And this motherboard is the ASUS Republica Gamers Crosshair X670E Extreme. So let's go to the tech specs. We're focused on USB. Now this shows, this is interesting. This particular motherboard has the Intel JHL8540 controller. That's not just a USB 4 controller, that's, uh, that's a Thunderbolt controller. Anyway, to reiterate, that's two USB 4 ports with Intel JHL8540, USB 4, we'll have a link up, two USB Type-C ports. And it also has one USB 3.2 generation 2x2 port. So that's a nice feature. And that's all built in. That's not done through an add-in card. And let's take a look, if we can, in the gallery and look at the I.O. panel, which they're not showing yet. So we'll have to come back to that some other time once the product is shipped. Now we're going to take a look at the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Extreme. This particular motherboard, specifications, let's go down to the uh, USB and this terminology they are using. Right here we are. Two USB Type-C ports with USB 3.2 generation 2x2 support. One on the back panel and one on the header, which is I like to refer to it by the speed of the protocol and then the protocol to reiterate 20 gigabit USB-C or as the USB forum calls it, USB 20 gigabit. But to me, the 20 gigabit USB-C makes more, more sense. And of course, the difference being this is identified is generation two by two. So when we're putting this together with motherboards and then we start looking at devices, it'll, it'll all come together and make a whole lot more sense. But I want to show you what you're looking for to reiterate that. Because the naming conventions are all over the place. Even though we know what they're supposed to be, it is what it is. I want to take a look at the gallery and see if it'll show us the I.O. panel. I'll zoom in on this the best we can. And those are both USB-C ports. And it looks like the first one, I can barely read it, is 10 gigabit. And the second one is the 20 gigabit. And of course, the third USB-C port will be on the motherboard. So I want us to sh take a look and uh, share that and show it. Now, the most helpful link that we found to reiterate is from Kingston. And we'll have this information, of course, up all in the description. I don't know if we'll have everything up, but we'll have up as much as we can because we don't get a lot of space. We were crowded in the last video for, for information we wanted to share. Anyway, this particular document, what is USB 3.2 generation 2 by 2 a really nice description talking about the uh, protocol and the USB-C connector. Talks about the uh, bandwidth. And always remember when we're talking bandwidth, there's a difference in burst mode, which is what the specs are talking about, versus actual throughput, which is what we get, which is lower because of overhead of the protocol and overhead of the interface. It is what it is. But based on PCI Express 3.0, which is four lanes, 3,500 megabytes is pretty good. So we look at uh, what's the lowest common denominator, 20 gigabit, and what's the highest performance we're going to get pretty close to this. And this talks about the transfer speeds, and it gets into the specification benchmark results so you can see the kind of speeds we've gone through. You know, when you think of USB 2 or when you think of USB 3, this is a point that I think needs to be brought up. I've never had a USB connector go bad, but I've had USB-C cables because of the connector go bad. And uh, that's the one thing that's the weak chain, or the weak link in this chain, is that USB-C connector. How many of you here have a smartphone with USB-C connection? How many cables have you gone through? Yeah, been there, done that. So I'm a little bit concerned about this USB-C and what we're trying to do. But it is what it is. And my greatest concern is, as it's being identified now with the USB forum, of calling it, let's say, USB 20 gigabit, Personally, I think it needs to be identified as the speed of the protocol. Then we talk about the protocol and then the interface because there's going to have to be another interface after this. What's it going to be? I don't have a clue. But knowing what we went through with HDMI and what we got into with DisplayPort, DisplayPort solved the problem where you can plug something in, it would lock. 
but we've had some iffy, iffy issues with DisplayPort on monitors, where if you had a problem, you went back to uh, HDMI, and when the HDMI cable goes bad, you replace it. That's the only problem I've had with HDMI. And another company came out with a way to lock it, but that mechanism to lock that cable on, whole another topic, whole another conversation. But we're having those kind of issues with USB-C about that connection not being real good, which means replacing cables. So I'm leery of recommending any cables knowing what we're getting ready to get into. But the devices look pretty exciting so far. But I want to point this out. And then, of course, we get down, as it says here, generation 2x2, two two, which is the 20 gigabit. And it goes into USB 4 at 40 gigabit, but they don't have up the information yet about the, uh, that's USB 4 version 1. To reiterate, they don't have the information up yet about USB 4 version 2 yet, but we've got an article link that talks about the chipset that AS Media is coming out with, it's not out yet, that will be out with the new motherboards that are on the AMD X670E Extreme chipset, which is pretty wicked. We'll get to in a minute. And then Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabit. And remember, Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, it's about 40 gigabit bi-directional support. That's how they get the speed, which is actually only about uh, a little over 31 gigabit. But I digress. Just numbers to keep in mind. Now, what devices is supported? And this is the list that kind of brought a lot into focus for me. I'm not going to go through this, but I want to show you because of significance, I found was the X299 chipset. This is on an MSI motherboard, X299 Pro, and it's there. And I took the time to go back through Amazon on some of these devices, and I didn't know we had this support that far back. There's also a, uh, another MSI motherboard on the high-end desktop because that's the high-end desktop for Intel, but the high-end desktop, which is the TRX40 for AMD, there's also an MSI motherboard that supports 20 gigabit USB-C, which I was really surprised. And there are a couple of laptops in this list. The Dell Inspiron. I'll zoom in on that, but I'll have this link for you to take a look at. Now, I went hunting for this first laptop. And what I found is I looked at the sales specs. Nothing was listed about 20 gigabit. However, when I looked at the specifications for the device directly from Dell, first they list, and I'll see if I can still find the link. I'll put it up. First, they list the uh, USB ports. And then further down in the list of USB devices, they list the 20 gigabit port, and they have it listed as a display port alternate mode port, which is kind of amazing. But none of the documentation, as far as sales literature, had any of that. Nothing on Amazon, nothing. So all this stuff, you're going to have to double check, and you're going to have to test and verify. We're just telling you what's here, what it's going to take to implement it. If you've got an older laptop, you're going to have to look. If you've got a new laptop, it's something they're going to be showing and telling and talking about. And if it's there, they'll tell us. If it's not there, it won't. I think the first thing that came to mind years ago was when somebody asked me about DisplayPort alternate mode on an HP laptop. Well, the technology supported DisplayPort alternate mode, but HP did not implement it. So that gets into the same issue when we're talking about uh, motherboard chipsets. When you guys ask about storage, which was what the focus was on the previous video, what does it take to implement added storage? There's the design, and then there's the implementation. The implementation, we look at the motherboard. But for the design, we have to look at the CPU and the chipset and then see how that meshes together. So with this, if it's built in, you're going to have to do some hunting and pecking. But if you don't have it and you meet those two requirements, add-in cards because of the uh, chipset will show you what you're going to get. Let's take a look. Now, they have two expansion cards listed here. One's Ablecon and one is Orico. And I haven't researched all these, but I've researched several of these. Now I want to take you over to AS Media. Now that we've looked at support on some motherboards and support on a laptop, I didn't verify both of them. Because this is an ongoing thing, and I've been working on this for quite a while, but it was relevant now because of SanDisk that we're going to get to. But I want to show you the AS Media chipsets and how this has changed, starting with the ASM 3241 chipset. And what we may do is a little bit of comparison here for features. General features, PCI Express 3.2, PCI Express support, or PCI Express 3, and most importantly down here, the USB features. This says up to 20 gigabits, and it's one port. Okay, that, to reiterate, is the 3241. Let's take a look and see how that compares now with the AS Media 3242 chipset. Let's get down here to the features. USB 3.2. PCI Express 3.0, PCI 
supports one port up to 20 gigabit. And the most important feature right here, this chipset supports four lanes, whereas the previous chipset supported two lanes. And it's important to point that out because some people have, uh, you know, been, I think been confused. And it's easy to do that because it's all based on what chipset you're talking about. If you're talking a chipset that supports two lanes versus a chipset that supports four lanes, everything I've been telling on what I've been talking about is based on four lanes. So when you have an add-in card that requires four lanes, then it kind of gives you an idea which chipset you're working with. Also, one port. So if you're looking at a card that's got two ports, you got to take an examination step back and say, what have I got based on the preponderance of information of what I know to be true? What am I looking at? And that's kind of what we're doing here. Okay. Now this chipset is coming out, and it's, uh, to reiterate, going to be on the new motherboards with the new chipset with AMD. And we're going to be hearing a lot more about it. But this is the new AS Media USB 4 host controller, and this is the 4242. And this is the one, according to this information, that not only will support DisplayPort alternate mode and power delivery, but this is going to require, yeah, DP port alternate mode and USB 4 generation 3.2, which is 40 gigabit. But this is going to support, this is said to have PCI Express 4.0 and is going to support, okay, and I, I didn't remember that. That says PCI Express 4 and is going to support 64 gigabits. Okay, this is supposed to go up to 80 gigabits. And I don't see that information in there now. Because I'm pretty certain this had the information about the 80 gigabit. And this is what I have uh, relied upon. Could have been updated. I could have read it someplace else. And of course, this new chipset is going to be backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. But to reiterate, it's an AS Media chipset, and it's the 4242. And that's who AMD has worked with for their Northbridge Southbridge chips, whatever they're going to call it. And that's what we're going to see on motherboards, whether it supplies one port or two ports, because there's going to be three ports on the motherboard. What we don't know is the native chipset support, whether it's going to be one or two ports. Don't know yet. But what we do know, based on this article, is pretty wicked. And I'm pretty sure this originally talked about 80 gigabits, but that information I don't see there. So consider the source and hearing it from me, take it with a grain of salt, but it's information that's in a state of play apparently. But uh, be aware of this, because once you're on the uh, AS Media site, you can take a look at all their devices up to the latest, which is the, over here to the left, USB 3.2 Generation 2. And to reiterate, the ASM 3242, which is a 2x2, two two, and the 3241, which is also a 2x2, two two, but the 3241 is two lanes, whereas the 3242 is four lanes. And that's the distinction. So now let's take a look at some add-in cards. Now I don't know this for a fact, but I wanted to point this out. This is the Gigabyte GC-USB 3.2 Generation 2x2 two two add-in card. This may have been one of the first ones available. I can't find it. Nobody's got it. And it requires a four-lane slot. And it shows the chipset, an AS Media 3242, USB 3.2, Generation 2x2 two two controller. And one port, as you can see right there. One of the most unusual cards i got to point out, and b &H has this listed. This is the High Point Rocket U 1488C PCI Express 3.0 by 16. Yep, yep, you heard that right. This requires a 16-lane slot electrically. And it says... That's USB 3.2, 20 gigabit USB host controller. Okay, if that were truly so, let's take a look here at how many uh, ports we're talking about. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, let's do the math. If each requires four lanes, then that's going to be four ports for four lanes. That's 16 lanes. We got eight ports. So there's some multiplexing going on here, and there's no way really to test it, and I've asked they don't tell the chipset. I've looked, can't find it. So because of the price of the card, you get eight 20 gigabit ports. But that combined bandwidth, if they're using some kind of a PLX chip like they do on the add-in cards that are self-bifurcated so that they can use a 16-line slot but don't require motherboard bifurcation. And no, this doesn't require motherboard bifurcation. Those are two separate issues. If you know what I'm talking about, okay. And if you don't, don't worry about it. But a card like this would have to have a PLX chip to do the lane switching, to be able to accommodate eight ports. Otherwise, that card with the chip, based on what we know, should only accommodate four ports in a 16-lane slot. And, of course, they've got that uh, giant heat sink on it that covers up the chipset, which I don't know if we'd be able to read it 
if it's big enough to see it with just a camera. Might need a microscope. Point that out. But I want to mention this card. I'm going to have it up at a link because if you need something like it and if you have a motherboard that can support it. Now remember, when we're talking add-in cards on a consumer desktop motherboard, you're going to have one 16-lane slot electrically. When you start divvying up resources, you don't have enough resources on a consumer desktop motherboard to add something like that. Otherwise, you uh, get into issues that we talk about in all the other videos, separate discussion. But as it relates to 20 gigabit USB-C, this needs, without going into details, a high-end desktop or a workstation to add a card like that if you want to do that. And again, I don't have any idea what the chipset is. I'd like to know. If somebody knows, share it with us, please. But as always, we like to share what we know. Now, one of the easiest ways to look for I.O. adapters, and here's an example, Ablecon. I just went to Amazon, punched in AS Media, the ASM3242 controller, and uh, this is an Ablecon card. You get an idea of the price. And if you look, we've got one port, and the chip there is big enough to see it, and that takes a four-lane slot. And that'll work on a consumer desktop motherboard to add 20 gigabit USB-C. Another of the same thing, this uses the AS Media 3242 chipset, and this is uh, IO Crest, which is also known by the name of Cyba. This particular one, though, if you'll notice, has a uh, power tap from a SATA drive, which is kind of interesting. One port. And one of the cards in here, if I can find the information on it, has two ports. One port, one, excuse me, one USB-C port is strictly for power. StarTech is another one, and again uses the uh, same chipset, 20 gigabit, PCI Express 3x4. One port on the card, and you can see the chipset right there in the middle, four lanes, four lane slot electrically. Now here's an example of an older card. This uses the uh, 3142. It has two ports, which there's only supposed to be one, but uh, it's 10 gigabit. And it says here 10 gigabit. But there was one particular card that we had found that had two ports, and one port had a different orientation on the card. If I can find it, I'll get it up. Uh, in the description, but that one port to reiterate was strictly for power delivery, which was kind of interesting. Good idea, I guess. But according to the spec of the AS Media chipset, one port supports two activities. That third activity is not supported. Now, AS Media had a chipset previously on USB C that would support that third technology, which was Display Port Alternate No Mode. Only one company had a card for that. It goes back probably uh, four years. Card is no longer available. Don't know if anybody else using the chipset. I reference it because it's fascinating that now something that was a big deal is coming back as a big deal to put USB-C DisplayPort alternate mode in as one of the third features of USB-C. So you've got the protocol, you've got the speed of the protocol, then you have the interface. I like to know what the interface is, but I want to first know what the speed of the protocol is because that tells me everything I need to know. 20 gigabit USB-C. Now what brings this all together, just showing you a few, showing you the list, and I'll put up some links to some other boards. But what really brings us together are the devices. Now, this first device that caught our attention from Kingston, the XS2000 external solid state drive, USB Type-C 3.2 generation 2x2, which is, this is some good information to give you some idea of uh, what we're working with, and SanDisk. And this happens to be a one terabyte. It's good for up to a four terabyte. We'll have a link up into B&H. We'll also get links up into Amazon as they become available. B&H has this stuff first. Anyway, to reiterate, SanDisk 4TB Extreme Pro, portable SSD version 2. And right here in the details, USB 3.2 generation 2x2 Type-C. So 2,000 megabytes and a nice description in the uh, overview at B&H Photo. Now, one of our subscribers pointed out this manufacturer, IcyBox, which is different than IcyDoc. And this is an enclosure for an M.2 NVMe drive with USB 3.2 generation 2x2 Type-C. And if you've got the interface, number one, and if you've got the protocol, number two, but number three, if you have the interface speed, then you can run this at full speed and, and get all the benefits from it. But because it includes the cable, it'll also work on a USB 3 cable. You won't get the speed, but can't expect to. Okay, now this next one from SanDisk I got to show you pulls a lot of this together because this next device is a new technology that SanDisk has come out. But keep in mind we're PCI Express 3, 3.0, four lanes, and the biggest drive that SanDisk makes in an NVMe drive is four terabytes. So for those that are asking about eight terabyte drives, 
If SanDisk ever comes out with an 8-terabyte drive, yeah, that'd be wicked. Now, this next component I'm going to show you is actually three parts. You've only got to have two parts. You can choose the primary, which is the data drive, but then you have to have the uh, docking station, we'll call it. And there's a single drive docking station and a four drive docking station. Let me show you. Now, this device is a SanDisk Professional for high performance storage for content creators. Four terabyte Pro Blade Transport. It's portable and it's modular. It's an NVMe drive SSD. And it's good for up to 2,000 megabytes, which would be 20 gigabit per second. And you'll notice USB 3.2 generation 2x2. And this is available as a transport or an SSD mag. If you go with an SSD mag, you can see how much smaller it is and how much more portable it is. And the real advantage of that storage device, it minimizes or eliminates the problem because it's, that's an alum, aluminum container. It uh, to reiterate, eliminates or minimizes the problem with ESD, which is a concern because M.2 NVMe is not designed to be handled and it's susceptible to ESD, whereas this is either not or less susceptible. So you can handle one of these. Now, it's not waterproof, but you can handle one of these, keep in your pocket or whatever, but you've got to have a docking station for it. So the technology is coming out two ways. One is this, which you have to have a docking station for, or this, which is completely separate, which is both are listed on the same page, which is why we wanted to show the distinction, the SSD mag or the transport. And the transport's good up to four terabytes. To reiterate, four terabyte is the largest disk they make. The other three companies that make the eight terabyte drives haven't come out with something like this. And because this is SanDisk, which is now owned by Western Digital, it's going to be an exclusive item. Even though it's an exclusive item, I don't want to call it proprietary because it's uh, USB-C and it's 20 gigabit. So to implement that, if your laptop supports it, great. If it doesn't, you'll get the slower speed. But on a system that has the 20 gigabit, or if you want to implement it, you can do an add-in card. Or if you build a new machine, which could be a consumer desktop motherboard, could be a high-end desktop, or could be a workstation. It's all there for 20 gigabit. And some of the workstation motherboards support the 20 gigabit USB-C, which is pretty wild. But I want to show you a step further how all this meshes together. But I want to make sure you understood the difference in the transport and the SSD mag. Okay, now, based on the SSD mag, same device into B&H, a little bit easier clarity because they've separated it. And, of course, the transport. This is the transport, just the container. And you can see right there in that endpoint, that's where you slip the SSD mag. The SSD mag goes right there in the Pro Blade transport for one disk, four terabyte. However, if you decide you want to go with four, this is the new device that's not out yet that will take four of those. So you could have four four terabyte drives in this device. No price on it yet. It's that brand spanking new. JBOD. For those that are asking, does it support RAID? If you try to do software RAID at your own risk, according to the manufacturer's specs, JBOD, just a bunch of disks. So want to keep that in mind. But four four terabyte drives, copy to one drive, copy to number two, number three, number four. The interface. Under the overview, this is 40 gigabit, Thunderbolt 3. So the point and distinction to show you what SanDisk is doing, and because of this device, I felt like now is the time to talk about it. If you're looking to implement this technology, it can be done. If you already have this technology and not are aware of it, take a look at your specs. Look at some of the motherboards because you know the specs and terminology you're looking for. I like to see the number 20 gigabit, but you may see the generation 2x2. Two two. At least you'll know how all that meshes together as you see those different. It's a conundrum. And with this device, you have the option with the MAG SSD from SanDisk to either plug that in to just a one device container or a four device container. One that supports 20 gigabit or one that supports Thunderbolt. Now remember the Thunderbolt 3 device is Thunderbolt only. Whereas the 20 gigabit device will work on 20 gigabit USB-C, 10 gigabit USB-C or whatever USB-C which means it'll also work on Thunderbolt, so it can work in both places. So the lowest common denominator with the highest amount of bandwidth. I want to thank you guys for watching. My name's Gil Boyd. This is Builder By. Welcome. I appreciate everybody's support. I love my subscribers. I look forward to seeing you next video. We're out. <laughs>